I bet you're all wondering what I'm doing in this seat right here without my traditional hat on. Well, story time, folks. By the way, if you don't care about the backstory of this episode and you just want to see the episode or what's going to be the episode, time code to start right here. So, I've been in the States since February 7th, and I've been working on this episode for about a week and a half at this point. And a uh, funny thing happened uh, last night, uh, last night being February 17th. Uh, during the middle of my scripting, uh, my writing program just kind of froze on me. That's not good. And after a quick little restart, I found out that the file that I've been working on, my script file, had been corrupted. Week and a half of work, down the drain. Now, from here, I had two options. I could either try to rewrite everything that I had in record time to get this episode out before the end of the month, or I could just pull a Bill O'Reilly. We'll do it live, fuck it. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! And that's what's happening now. This entire episode is going to be completely unscripted. This is just going to be as off the cuff as I possibly can. I have a bullet pointed list here. I have a timer because apparently the video files that are recorded onto this camera right now like to segment the files after a certain point. So basically I have to make sure that the video file doesn't reach past 15 minutes and you don't care about this stuff. I'm juggling things right now. Uh, I got the uh, DVD right here and you know, might as well make this as fun as possible, make it as chill as possible. Let's make that content. Okay, let's do this. Oh, beer everywhere. Boogie's Angel, what'd you say about it? Well, if you saw my, uh, the episode previous to this, you know for a fact that this was directed by Masami Obari. Yep, the patron saint of anime abandoned. Uh, it's kind of our unofficial title for the man. That's what happens when you've basically been giving me content for the past 10 years. I accept you. I accept you. Now, the amount of titles that Obari has directed over the years has basically been dwindling. We pretty much already covered, save for a few titles that was never released outside of Japan as far as I know. I initially went into Boogie's Angel expecting to, you know, talk about Masami Obari because it's been too long since I last talked about him. And I knew that it was this and maybe two other titles and that's about it. And then SNK announced just literally last month, I believe, that they were going to make a new King of Fighters anime directed by Masami Obari. Uh, Huzzah, right? I know. It's gonna be freaking awesome. It was just sort of serendipitous in that way that they make that announcement right after I just announced that I was going to cover an Obari anime. And that just felt fine for me, especially since when I, when I actually went over Boogie's Angel, how should we put it lightly? It's not an Obari anime. Wow, Rebecca, that was so cool the way you took out all those mechas so fast. I wish I was that good. <sighs> Basically, Masami Obari was a hired gun director for the series creator, Aoi Takeuchi, based off of his radio drama, if I'm understanding correctly. Aoi Takeuchi scripted the entire series and even directed the last of the three episodes of this entire OVA. So it's more fair to say that it's Takeuchi's uh, series than it is Obari's series. And because of that, it's not really something that I was expecting to talk about the way I wind up talking about it, literally. Now look, this isn't practice anymore, okay? So don't screw up! Yeah, when the time comes, we'll die together. Uh, Meyer, no dying allowed! Get with the program, come on! If I could go back in time, I would probably, you know, dial back the excitement that I was leading on with, with that whole auto laugh in the last episode, but... I see Masami Obari's name and I initially get giddy. So giddy that I kind of overlooked the weird title of this anime. Now, I know it says Boogie's Angel, and as you can tell, the main character Boogie here. <laughs> you need not know my name. First of all, there are more than one 
Uh, mm. Maybe I shouldn't be drinking beer while I'm recording this. Oh well. For the longest time, I thought it was supposed to be Boogie's Angels, but it's really Boogie's Angel singular, even though there's more than one angel. And if you think you're gonna get away with calling him oh, name, but right. I'm that's oh. enough, Boogie. Oh, hi, I'm Mary Bell. Uh, uh, hi, let me introduce myself. I'm sure. Oh, All right, angels, that'll be quite enough. I think what happened is that the Japanese don't have traditional plural markers like English has. So it could very well be that there was just something lost in the translation, even though if I looked at the Romanji, it literally just translated it means Boogie's Angel. So yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Weirdest thing is that they remembered the possessive S, but they don't remember the plural S. Weird how that works out sometimes. But I digress, there's a whole lot more to this anime than its nomenclatural issues. Like how it's a big ol' steaming pile of what? Now wait a minute, Buster! I don't know where you get off, you pompous SOB! So it's the future aliens have taken over the Earth and have driven humanity underneath the sea. And of course these aliens are beautiful people with just weird markings on their foreheads because that's what aliens in anime look like half the time. Observe closely. Pathetic humans. And humanity's last hope lies in these angels who are a bunch of idiotic tropes. Big guns, that's what I'm talking about. No! But if we don't make it, we're all gonna die! Liar! Pick your favorite out of the lineup. Whichever one floats your boat there, guy. Yeah, not a single spot, baby. Oh, how I love it. Rebecca! Oh, holy crap, Boogie, you scared me! The story is, is that they were bioengineered to protect humanity but that means they had to have been designed this way. And I really have to ask, why in the world would anyone build the last line of defense, their entire planet's hopes, on these four idiots? It's actually kind of funny to me, uh, towards the beginning of the series when they're first introduced, apparently this was supposed to be a secret project from the whatever is left of the Earth's military. And they first see them and they're just amazed. They even do the whole, it's a bird, it's a plane kind of lead up too. It looks like a bird, Admiral. No, I think it's a plane. But by the second episode, they are literally grumbling and think that they're just complete morons too. I think we've got a problem, sir. It's the angels. Oh, those are not angels. Oh, God, no, no, no. I really have to wonder what in the world is their creator's deal, other than the fact that he is just basically a lifted character design from Voltage Fighter Gokaiser. You know, another one of Obari's anime. Three years. That's sooner than expected. And how are my angels progressing? I've been held in an unchanging state for three years, Kiyosuke. And speaking of ripping himself off, there is another little Easter egg that's further down into the anime, like towards the last episode. <laughs> you kind of have to wonder, is that where Obari got the idea for Angel Blade? Or is that just a little happy coincidence? I think by now you can pretty much tell what kind of tone the show is going for. Even beyond the fact that our four main leads are like these twee balls of cuteness, even our main antagonist is this weird, small little girl who reminds me of Marty Mae from Endless Waltz. Captain Cougar, you're being as sweet as always, but I don't care what it takes. I want all that I find, a nuisance to vanish. The fact that the character design makes her look like a little girl, and also the fact that the voice actress is clearly out of her depth, makes the main antagonist just sound so cloyingly cute, even when she's talking about destroying all of Earth and conquering humanity. Angels created by humans. How humorous. <laughs> the characters themselves pretty much are the only drawing interest in watching Boogie's Angel because there's almost no plot. The first episode literally has about 15 minutes of plot and the rest of it is just backstory and filler. There's a point in the first episode where Vugi watches a Chanbara anime and we watch it with her for a full minute and a half. Can I have your name? 
The Magnificent Samurai. You know an anime is light on plot if you spend more than just 15 seconds watching an anime within that anime. The entire plot of the first episode boils down to the aliens have a galaxy destroying cannon and so the angels come in with their own galaxy destroying cannon and use it to destroy the other galaxy destroying cannon. We have to make our move to destroy their hyper cannon before the aqua base reaches the surface. And the only resource we have available is the dimension blaster. What? Actually, the more I think about it, it's weird that they even made the angels at all because if they have their own galaxy destroying cannon to destroy the aliens galaxy destroying cannon, why make the angels at all? It's not like the angels are the only ones who can fire the galaxy destroying cannon. So you're setting yourself up for this weird show about fan service girls fighting aliens and you're expecting a lighthearted cheesecake time. And then midway between the second episode and the third episode, the show begins taking this turn. In the second episode, the aliens recover from the fact that they lost their galaxy destroying cannon by just magically poofing into being another galaxy destroying cannon. I hope that you like the new base. Uh, please forgive me, sir. We're rushing to complete the hyper cannon too, and we are revamping our forces. And oh no, the angels can't use their own galaxy destroying cannon, so they have to think on their feet which leads to one of the other members of the military sacrificing themselves by kamikazeing into the cannon and shutting it off. Power! There's this weird side story where this pilot has this PTSD flashback to when his entire unit was killed by rogue AI and therefore he has this murder boner for the angels because they're part robot too. My team and I are human beings of flesh and bone. We cannot be expected to risk our lives to cooperate with these mechanical dolls. But the anime sets this all up within the span of 10 minutes, so it has the emotional impact of a goddamn pea shooter, and I am out of beer. I should get another one. Let's go! Yeah, this anime is a twofer. It's also in the second episode we first get to see what amounts to our big baddie of the entire anime. These two cyborgs that the aliens make for one reason or another. You must wake. It's time. They never go into why they made them. They're just there for the angels to inevitably fight. I will say at the very least that these alien made cyborgs are more entertaining than the angels. Who the hell are you? <laughs> Who am I? I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Damn you! Boogie! Tick tock, the clocks run out for you and me. And when the angels crash their ship into the cannon to finish the job, they get held hostage. And this is where you learn that apparently they have tragic backstories and lucky us, we're going to sit through every single one of them and this is where the anime kind of just goes off the reservation completely. Why is this happening? Am I dying? I don't wa wanna die. Watching Boogie's Angel is kind of like riding Dumbo at Disneyland. If in the last 10 seconds of the ride, it goes haywire and starts spinning like at the speed of sound and launches you clear over the basin. So please, don't die. Please live. Live. The fact that we go over every single one of these girls' backstories with this dripping with melodrama god choir in the background and this harrowing scene feels completely out of place from the anime we've been watching up until now. My gift to you, the memories of your past human lives. <gasps> and these backstories feel like they belong in a completely different anime. One of them is literally a weapon experiment, you know, a la Tetsuo from Akira. I never asked for this <laughs> And one of their backstories is the character's family all dying from the initial alien invasion, including her own baby brother. Go. 
Let me ask you this. When you see this scene, I am so pissed off that I could just, well, I could, you could just what, Voogie? Well, mm, I gotta eat something. Do you think within an episode, we'll see a shot of a dead baby? If you said yes, you might just be powerfully insane. You probably don't need me to tell you that these last few scenes at the end of the anime were directed by a completely different person, because not only does it look different, but the quality of animation between the first two episodes and the third episode is probably a good country mile. I might have gone over this before, but you have to forgive me. I've made this show for nearly 10 years over the course of 250 episodes, and so I think I deserve a little leeway if I retread this ground. I call this phenomena Final Act Syndrome when the last episode of an anime series goes completely against the grain of the comedic tone they've set up up until now, and just goes whole hog, absolute tragedy. Now this is just different from a comedic show, just deciding to make the last few episodes more somber. This is a very specific phenomena where the degree from which it goes from comedy to tragedy is just razor thin. I used to hold Desert Punk as the gold standard for Final Act Syndrome, but after sitting through Voogie's Angel, I think that crown has been taken. This is the prototypical Final Act Syndrome anime. Who am I? I'm not human! The final episode is basically all of the girl's backstory consolidated into the first half of the episode. And the last half of the episode is the fight with the alien made cyborgs that doesn't really reach a fulfilling conclusion. And I gotta admit, it's really funny to see these fight scenes backed by what sounds like a ripoff of the Escaflone soundtrack. You're gonna get an ass kicking. Not that it would be the first time the Voogie's Angel soundtrack ripped something off. Missed you, Archer. But be that as it may, the fight basically ends with the alien made cyborg daring Boogie to kill him, and she just says no in the most hilarious way possible. Kill you? Huh? Yeah, right. Then you wouldn't have to think about all the innocent people you killed. I should just put you out of your misery right now. How dare you want me to kill you? I ought to kill you for that. You have to understand that the plot progression in these last few episodes are a joke. It goes from backstory to fight scene to the alien overlords saying, eh, let's just cut our losses and using yet another galaxy destroying cannon to destroy their other galaxy destroying cannon and everything goes boom and the angels live and the alien made cyborgs die. But we will no longer be slaves to these machines, my brother. No longer. True. Yep, that's the end. No denouement, no comeuppance for the alien overlords or anything. I guess we're just going to have to listen to the radio drama that no American can possibly listen to. Media Blasters, why the hell did you license this? Now it's useless. You are all useless. The ending is really funny to me because it marks the third time that the aliens basically were their own worst enemies. No one fails me. Maybe your replacement will learn from this mistake. Will you not at least give our comrades an opportunity to escape? <gasps> Satellite cannon ID number X. Now they'll all die with the angels, won't they? Well, you've got to evacuate everyone. Ah! Uh, don't do that. Really, when you think about it, the aliens are more of a danger to themselves than the angels are. But the more hilarious thing about the ending is that the anime decides to play us off with something that sounds like a sitcom from the 90s. If I were to sum up Boogie's Angel in a thought, 
it's that it's really off kilter. It doesn't really have a lot of a reason to exist even in Japanese context, let alone an American context. And you have to wonder why Media Blasters bothered to dub it, let alone release it. And even though Obari didn't really contribute a lot to this series, I have to say that Takeuchi did try to do something intriguing with the anime. Like if you took the third episode and you just halved off the fight scene and everything that came before it, and you just paid attention to the backstories of the main characters, there is something here. Like beyond the tonal whiplash you get from watching the last episode, you have to commend the fact that they really bumped up the animation game, at least for the flashback sequences in the third episode. It's just too bad that all of these scenes are within the context of the anime itself, because they do not belong at all. There's also some entertaining line reads, mostly from the villains in the second and third episode, but otherwise, the anime is a complete head trip. So, with that being said, this has been a unique episode of Anime Abandon, befitting the penultimate episode before the 250th episode. That's right, our next episode will not only be our 250th episode, it will also mark our 10th anniversary of Anime Abandon, and it will premiere on YouTube on April 14th. So until then, I am going to sign off from this very, very unique episode of Anime Abandon, and hopefully I can salvage all of this into a presentable episode for all of you. Till next time.